Oh god, that's that's oh, that's oh. loud. It's that's huge. Look. Oh it's damn. A pancake maker. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vin Stone in beautiful downtown Athens, Georgia, joined every week by a man up north, a fireplace of a man, you might say. Optimus Prime in the picture, look at it. It is quite beautiful. That is Jordan's fang. And Crum. just so we can have double complete Canadian, you know what you love it, mom. I want God of War. Nay, we got God of War at home. Sandy, fuck Mothering Martin, right here. What's going on? Yeah. Together with you, Shat Realm Dynamic. Joining us live, watching us on Twitch, helping us form today. I've got the button. Cocaine, Cocaine Voltron. Voltron. Look Ooh. Look, look. Sounds like a robot. Pew, pew, yeah. pew, pew. All right. Pew, hey. pews. With- I didn't say pubes. I said pew, you monster. <laughs> I said pubes. <laughs> ah. I definitely said pubes. It's going to be a fun one. What's up? What's new? Do we think uh, you know what we're going to talk about? So just calm down. We're going to get to it. NVIDIA drivers, guaranteed. But, Jordan, you got anything new, man? I'm still chilling around at the house. Got anything? Uh, I, I, yeah, I, 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 had, I, had a, I had a PR for my overhead press. I got 200 pounds for nine reps, which is pretty nice. Uh, nice. And yeah, that, that's, that's kind of it. That was, that was the high point of my week. Uh, otherwise it's just a lot of, um, just a lot of dull humdrum. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sandro, anything new at the comic shop? Uh, nothing much new. Still doing some edits, uh, checking out some of the latest issues. New number ones just came out for, uh, image and, uh, dark horse. Um, outside of that, just playing, been playing around with a uh, Godot engine lately. Uh, looking at some stuff, playing, just playing around with it, seeing what you can do with it. And you can do a lot. Um, but outside of that, you know, just hanging out, being a dude, doing some cleaning, All right, doing, All right. doing some dude stuff with some other dudes. Well, this yeah. Is the, doing the dude, dude stuff with dudes. It is quite entertaining. Um, Jordan is consuming all of Canada's bandwidth this evening. So, uh, mm-hmm. well, Sandy's audio is going to be fine. We're going to get some hilarious freeze frames during the episode. <laughs> so, I, I'm I'm hoping for Prime Sandy BJ oh, face. Oh, it's gonna be it's gonna be brilliant. Over here, uh, I've been playing around with a couple things. I have. I went and rescued a thing from Guitar Center. I got a uh, Aphex 207D digital that, let's face it, didn't work at all. Plugged in, true to form, didn't work at all. Uh, Refloated some solder, got some things back up and running, and it is back here in the rack. And the reason I'm bringing this up right now is because there is a much higher than non-zero chance that I will just go, you'll hear, and I'll do the super secret signal, like carry the show on, because I have the Motu powered up directly under it, ready to go to do that. Um, Nice. That that was fun. I got to play around. I got to make a new AES-3 cable that audiophiles hate the secret that you can just use the Ethernet cable. And... um, yeah, plugged in, got it in. That's working. Well, electrical signal is digital? No. <laughs> what? And the thing, you know, well, it's a good thing Ethernet cables don't carry electrical signals, Jordan. You need special audio electrical cable to carry yeah. the digital signals. You, 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 you need authentic horse gut cables <sighs> to... So horsey. You, you get to the point where you're explaining like impedance being 100 plus minus 10, like why that will always work as long as you're like under 40 meters. And after 40 meters, you might want to use shielded cat five. Um, mm. mm-hmm. Anyway, one thing we can never shield is the horse because each and every week it takes one right in the uh, chin. I, I mean, th- that's that's why it has the, the very strong regeneration. It does the regen build, so it doesn't have to deal with, like, the high armor class. So it has lots and lots of hit points and lots and lots of goop. It's the Steam! Lex. Update. Of the week. You uh, fucking cheaters. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Li- Linux users, man, they cheat so much. No one cares on about everything. this. Uh, this, this mm-hmm. is barely on, on, a story. on their taxes, on their mm-hmm. girlfriends, just, everything. Man, I, uh, <sighs> Epic Online Services has launched anti cheat support for Linux, Mac, and Steam Dick. That's right. Epic Online Services exists. 
to get a fat ass check from Steam and hold out until they got that fat. I don't know. I'm just kind of assuming this. Uh, that's what took so long. But yeah, EAC. It's on Linux now. And uh, I. Yay. It does yeah. require developers to legasp. They're going to have to go in and click a checkbox. So. Uh, what do we think about this? Because, you know, somebody's going to have to go first on this and there is an incentive now. There, there's a real thing you can point out, but unfortunately, like right now, it's the potential of making some extra cheddar being in the form of the steam deck and, you know, the potential sales for that. And I think that, cause I've seen a lot of people wanting to get the internet brigade and like, let's go annoy the developers and say, click the button, click the button. You know what? The single best thing that you can do as a Linux user is to go out and buy a Steam Deck and play games on it and get those numbers, get those hard metrics that Valve can go, look at this, go click the damn button. But back for blood. Hey, by the way, just just go ahead and click that button before we get the Steam Deck. Yeah. Please. Uh, For for your brothers and sisters, (laughs) man. We some- want to give you money. Yes. <laughs> yes. We want to pay $80 for your game. Just let us let us play it. But I've said it. <laughs> exactly. I've said it before and I'll say it again, man. Um, you know, Sweeney cares about that chatter. He's cash. He can be reasoned with if you just, you know, peel off a few bucks and to the, to the whole money thing. I, I, what do you think, Jordan? I mean, do you or do so- you not think Valve had to cut a check in order for this to become a thing? Oh, absolutely. But you you have to, you have to imagine once uh, once Epic started seeing the wind blow not in their favor when it came to that uh, Apple settlement, they're like, hmm, maybe we should start investigating other platforms we can have support on because we're not getting iPhones anymore. Uh I, I mean, like, it's 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 good, right? Like, uh, I'm I'm sure I'm sure there's a bunch of back channel politics that needed to happen in order for this to even be come about. Uh, given the uh, the I, I wouldn't say exactly hostile, but less than friendly uh, relationship that Valve and Epic have right now. So I don't know. Here, here's the thing. If it's as simple as hitting a tick box on your next build, this could be really great. It would be if you can. We've seen developers react to the whole Proton thing being like, if we can get this on a platform with no additional work on our part or minimal additional work on our part, then there's no reason to not do it. Uh, I'm positive though. There's going to be some growing pains. hundred oh, yeah. percent. Some people are just going to get fucking their accounts banned. That's going to be like a huge media shit show for like two weeks. And then everyone's going to forget it once it's fixed and we'll never speak of it again. Yep. Absolutely. Like guaranteed, guaranteed Gabe had to like, fork out i'm willing to wager ballpark he probably threw out a check of like a hundred mil to over at sweeney's way you know like just I, to even get him to do this well okay i i don't know i'm assuming i think epic and that whole thing is publicly traded right uh yes. epic yeah epic is. the only reason i bring yes. that up is we'll be able to dig through financials later on and find out if that was the case but here's what i'm looking for everyone I'm, lo- I'm looking so forward to this because there has to be revised excuses to the, I would totes run Linux, but blank. And for a long time, you know, the games, they've been sorted. You know, we got Proton pretty much there. So you've had to like roll it back to, but easy anti-cheat. Ha ha. See, I, I would still guys, I mean, I'd be right there with you doing the Linux thing, but th- th- these games, <laughs> now that changes. What do you think is going to be the new one? Jordan, you seem to lean on. It's going to be audio. But I, I mean, I'm, I'm just making fun of that now because for whatever reason, it's making a comeback. People keep fucking talking about Linux audio mm-hmm. and I don't, I don't know. I can't hear them because audio doesn't work under Linux. Well, I mean, it, 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 <laughs> the, the Linux audio thing is what the Windows users say to each other. Does, oh yeah, no, yeah. it's it, it's 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 recycled fud. Like they're they're ta- any 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 of these talking points are like so out of date. You like oh yeah, I tr- I tried to install Linux and I couldn't get my video card working. Blah blah blah. I was like when did you try this? Oh yeah, back in two thousand and four. Like mm. yeah, it's like it's it's so boring now. It it really is. Shit is so yep. plug and play at the moment. The uh, um here's something I what, want to what, bring up. Okay, okay. If I can't, is go, go nuts. Now, now that EAC is official and all the all the work's been done, when do you think old Captain Sweetie t- 
turns around and he goes, I think Epic needs some of that cheddar. Maybe we need to get our uh, Epic Game Store over to the Steam Deck. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, w- I wouldn't be surprised. Um, we're 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 seeing Valve make a lot of deals with publishers regarding like uh, like cross plat or cross platform catalog access. Like the like Microsoft has the the Game Pass thing. EA has EA Play. Doesn't I think Ubisoft has something? I could be wrong. They got um, a store. I don't know. Yeah, I, I well the, all the all the. Uh, Ubisoft games on Steam like make you install fucking yeah, Uplay to install them. They? Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I'm I'm just happy that like something that was promised for SteamOS is actually coming. Because remember, <laughs> it's the fucking member thing from our Discord. Remember back when Street Fighter Five was coming? Remember right. when they yeah. they promised that? Like, hey, at least you're supposedly you're delivering something. They have they haven't actually released it yet. We haven't seen games use it yet. So we're we're still in that sort of nebulous position, but it's all it's so it's so close. It's almost there. Mm. I'm just waiting for so, the dick just to get smacked out of my mouth. Just to have some fun. Basil brings up a good point. What do you think we're going to see first? God Galaxy or Epic? Ooh. Uh, God Galaxy. So, someone else is going to do it for Epic and they're just going to they're just going to like cut a check cuz that mm. that seems to be Epic's style like they're 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 not at all like paying attention to heroic games launcher because they're like ah yes let's see how this goes so that we can just buy them if it gets good enough to fucking call it call it a uh call it a product so if you're new to Uh, linux and you're wondering what this is all about like up and like we currently do not have this we ran into this the first time i ever experienced easy anti-cheat and i think a lot of you out there in the audience were, were with me back for blood because they had, you know, they enabled it, but it wasn't enforcing. I mean, it loaded easy anti cheat. That's yeah. the first time I'd ever seen them. Like, oh, there's a thing. With Proton, even though we can play most of the Windows games without any issues, uh, that would always kneecap us. You'd get kicked out of the game. It was detecting cheating. It's doing, but again, it's easy anti cheat. This has been a long road to a wholly ineffective system against people who want to cheat in online games. This, this, is, a, this is a security theater anti cheat. Yep. Yeah. Well, we can be thankful that there are better tools, better anti-cheat tools out there, maybe, sort of, kind of. I don't know. Well, hot on hot on the heels of the easy anti-cheat announcement. Uh, another anti-cheat uh, software company uh, wanted to get in on this as well. So, Badly, uh, their CEO has come out and said, yo, uh, we are also going to be uh, enabling support for Wine and Proton via opt-in support. Again, you'll also need to, the developers will also need to go in and click a tick box. And then auto magically, uh, Badly will support uh, Linux and Proton on those builds. Uh, not too. I actually, I, I actually went and checked what games are actually using Battle Eye these days. Thank you. That was going to be my next question. Like how many? How many <laughs> yeah. you went out and had? Like what are these games that? I don't... So, so De- Destiny Two is the big one. Okay. Although, but okay. I'm not really holding my breath for Bungie to pull that trigger. But given they've been banning Proton users as well, but you know what? Maybe. Extra sales are extra sales, mm. and you know if you're a, if you're a Patreon, you can get access to our show notes and make suggestions. Mister Fox uh, says that Rainbow Six Siege is the other big one mm. that uh, that has uh, Battle Eye implemented. You can see a list of games on uh, the Battle Eye website, but those are the ones that I think people actually give a shit about because there's other ones that I'm sure people are playing, but these are the big name ones. Yeah. Okay. We got some facts, yeah. frequently asked questions, and, oh, yes. you know, it's very important to have some p- answers to the questions about your dick, and uh, they get a nice little one. But you will notice the most important test of how long can your Steam Deck exist. Fully submerged in Mayo is completely absent, therefore list in fact section completely invalid. Did we see anything in here that went made you go, huh? Ah, the, the, the big one for me is the lack of eGPU support. They mm-hmm. say outright that they're not going to be supporting that. And I don't, I get why they're doing that. Cause you need to have something like Thumb- Thunderbolt implemented and that increases the cost of the unit. And for, for just like basic keyboard mouse controller stuff, USB-C is fine. Um, but it would, eGPU support to me would definitely help like extend the lifespan and a little bit more of the flexibility of the device because like, Hey, at least there's something of an upgrade path. You can plug in an eGPU and still play games with it. Um, after maybe, uh, the, 
our DNA 2 GPU has gotten a little too long in the tooth. Or if you want to say play games off your deck at higher than, you know, 1280 by 800. So yeah. what do you think about uh, I mean, the do answer to important things, you know, unlike uh, like say the switch docking your deck does not improve performance. So, I mean, it doesn't have like an enhanced mode. You can use multiple accounts on the same deck. Yes. That's also good. And I know this is, some people are really going to be wound up one way or the other. How long is the charging cable? That's 1.5 meters. So That's not too bad. No. That's a, that's actually probably pretty yeah. standard in terms that, of a lot of charging That is the perfect cables. length to get you like a step and a half before you rip it out of whatever it's plugged in. <laughs> but I, I, exactly. like that, that's, long, that's long enough to like reach the outlet in the bathroom or like by your bed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, oh, one one thing I did notice as well. Um, the enhancements to Steam UI are apparently are coming to big picture. Mm. Uh, they said they're they're trickling, going to be trickling those out in the coming months as well. So yes. it's good to see that BPM is getting some work because, you know, it's been a piece of shit for a while. Mm-hmm. Well, and it's funny, too, because like in there, they talk about like uh, VR set up for the deck. And oh, which- well, well, spo- spoilers, Sandrew. Oh, there's a spoiler, all right, because yeah. a couple of the one dev out of Japan, uh, Yuna Yuna 64, was testing out their uh, their game with the Steam Deck, trying out the VR, and they're like, oh, it runs pretty well. Like, it, it runs okay, like nothing major. And you can see, like, you the little bit of the desktop, because he's running it from the desktop interface, and... Uh, yeah, it's it's running pretty well. Like, see, I'm looking at there's it. a little latency Look, you, with uh, the movements. Sandy, you went all zoom and enhance, man. Um, I, I I went zoom and enhance. Oh, oh, you that was you. All right, never mind. That was me. So I initially looked at this and just like going through the video, uh, I looked at that. And I'm like, oh man, it looks like somebody put Windows 10 on it. Oh well, and George's like, nay, uh uh-uh. uh. Well, yeah. well, I, I mean, I mean, Sandy's like, no, I'm pretty sure that's plasma. I'm like. Can we zoom and enhance? Do they actually show the enough of the UI in in the video? And yeah, I, I looked at the little icon, and that is the the KDE Plasma icon for their start menu. So it does look like this is running in Proton uh, using mm-hmm. SteamOS three point Which you know, <laughs> again, the device isn't designed for VR, so the fact that this even works at all is like, oh, all right, that's, that's well, nice. I mean, that's still the, pretty awesome. Let's be one hundred percent honest. I mean, th- this is the type of shit any of us is the first thing we're trying, though, right? Like, yeah. Let's see what this thing can actually do, despite what it says it can do. Yeah. Well, because it, it would be very interesting, uh, especially if uh, we saw like maybe an all uh, like a self enclosed like uh, VR headset from Valve in the future, like something maybe based off the Steam Deck that has like a hip like unit that you clip on, and then you have the helmet on. Mm-hmm. I don't, oh, I don't that know. That would be something amazing. Like that. That would be amazing. That would be absolutely amazing. That would make a lot of sense. Like considering how well already this runs on like through Proton, like I could definitely see it like them eventually, like with a new VR headset, I could definitely see them uh, making, say, like a hip mounted version you, that does if, like uh, all the graphical processing. If, if, if you're if you're going to be using the, the deck as a uh, as as a hardware base for that, though, you'd need to, like, get all the um, D, uh, not the DLSS, the uh, FSR and all the other, like, performance uh, frame rate improving stuff shit hammered because, like, that integrated GPU isn't that powerful. Right. Like, it's pretty no, good. Absolutely. It's enough to like. But it's, I don't I don't think it's good enough to, like, drive VR without some very heavy optimization. And at the end of the day, yeah. I mean, if you're wondering what the translated uh, roughly translated, it is it kind of works. So yeah, <laughs> yeah I, and the, the, that I believe was the extent of the test. Is like, is this even mm. like, oh, all right, we're never going to use it like that, but that was pretty neat. All right, cool. So Steam Client beta update is got some new hotness. Yeah, I got to warm up my pipes. Oh, so sure. yeah, the uh, for Look at under, Mr. under Linux vibrating. Yeah, <laughs> I I I've, I threw out my fedora forever ago. Um, <laughs> for the best. For the best. Um, yeah, but uh, St- uh, Steam streaming and remote play is going to be using uh, Pipewire by default, which is pretty neat. And I, I don't know. I, th- I think it makes sense. Um, Pipewire originally was designed to handle all of like the AV framework for Linux. So if it provides some sort of native s- screen recording and casting capability, why not hook into it? I am curious to see if it would um, help at all with um, the uh, streaming remote pay- play latency just by like, Improving the, the the capture and send a little bit, 
know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Something to something to something to play around with. Um and and yeah, um there's also uh, a fix for multiple Steam uh multiple controllers uh for Steam input and apparently not getting any controller input once streaming starts, which I have run into. That that sometimes happens. I think this was uh, for me. That this is definitely Steam being the largest application that I personally know of that is directly targeting the pipes, mm-hmm. the pipe wire. You know, it's mm-hmm. not targeting like, hey, we're going to use Pulse Audio, then we'll use the Pulse Audio sitting through pipe wire and all that. It's like, no, let's go straight to the pipes, which is the future. Very happy to see that. Yeah, absolutely. That, that, it, and uh, like the uh, the biggest thing for me is like just fixing the issue with like the Steam controllers and like having. Uh, whoops, I turned it on. <laughs> uh, so the issue with the Steam controllers and how like you would end up having, if you set up uh, multiple Steam controllers to your system, it's always going to, if you turn on one Steam controller, it normally ghost controls another controller. And it's like, what the heck is going on? But now that they fixed a lot of that ghosting issues, this is, that makes me happy. Mm. That Now that, I can oh. actually use my controller again. I fucking I I we ran into this at Strider's place once when we were trying to do some couch co-op for uh for I forget I forget what game but it was the pr- the problem is like yeah you you hit jump on one player on player one and player two also jumps like it, yes yeah that sounds exactly. fun <laughs> yes yeah not, so fun not, not not if you want to play the actual game you started up it if you want to play a different <laughs> yeah, game. Exactly. It, it makes me wonder like what's the range on this name controller can I be around the corner. <laughs> just, just, just like sneak parrot to people's oh, man. computers. Yeah, I know oh, yeah. So um, we need to move Dota forward. None of us really. Uh, I, I, I played the Dota. I played the Dota twice. Once when it was first released on Linux, and I launched it, and I went through the thing, and I did that again when they added the Vulcan render. Well, uh, that Vulcan render might be the only thing you're going to be using from now on. Not might be. It's going to be the only thing that will be available in dota in the future which if we down to the bottom as we scroll through all this stuff i don't i don't play dota the, the, the actual game balance updates like no one gives a shit yeah, about that. Like, like, yeah okay. no one cares like, like if, if you want to if you want to learn about that dota listen to a dota forward. podcast so we're going to be removing support for 32-bit systems you're going to have to have a 64-bit machine that's right which is unfortunate i know people love playing Dota on their retro battle stations. Uh, remove support for Mac OS versions below 10 uh, for DirectX 9, Dynafire. It's going to be DX11 only. OpenGL support, Dynafire. Uh, customers using OpenGL will have to switch to Vulkan and remove support for X Audio, Dyna another Fire. Hey, and moving to SDL. I'd like to see that. That's some progress. Uh, it doesn't really change anything, but I wanted to bring this in because I know I. A lot of people play Dota too, man. They might, they, yeah. you might want to plan on that. You might need to go find a uh, card capable of supporting Vulcan, which would, in today's market, would probably cost you like slightly less than a thousand dollars for a ten year old card. Uh, uh, you're better off buying a CPU with like an integrated GPU because that'll definitely support <laughs> it. Uh, but uh, with this, we're seeing uh, essentially Valve is moving their games to DirectX 11 exclusively because you know if on Linux we get. Vulcan via Dixvix. So mm-hmm. it doesn't make sense for them to support multiple graphical backends when like, well, we can just write all, all of our uh, DirectX 11 code and lo and behold, we have our, comp- we have our uh, translation layer for DX 11 to Vulcan. So why? So there you go. We're done. Yeah. S- definitely simplified uh, builds, simplify supports, rip some legacy systems, but like, eh, can't feel too bad about that. Sandy. No. And like, I was playing Dota when the only time I started playing Dota again was when they first did the beta for Vulcan on Dota 2 mm-hmm. and it was running smoothly then. So it, it only makes sense for them just to move directly to Vulcan like and all that other stuff like uh, like I haven't played it since, but I'm not surprised that they just went full move to, to Vulcan because that makes sense in this day and age, like considering the the support hardware support is pretty freaking good with Vulcan already like just where it's at um but yeah like rip rip open gl no. but you know what you know what isn't ripped the tides the tides aren't ripped what the hell is wrong with this frogman sandy he looks like he's uh <laughs> he's struggling a bit man 
Oh yeah, that guy looks like he doesn't <laughs> know how to shave his mustache. Well, properly. I, I mean, we got like this frog man with a rainbow gun, right on, right on. Then we got a uh, not Rambo, and over here's like <laughs> Captain Jack Sparrow uh, on a budget. I, I thought I thought it was like stero- steroid budget Danny Trejo. Could be. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking about Operation Yeah, so the latest, the, the latest content just came out for uh, CSGO called Riptide. So it's a whole new like battle pass or uh, it's mostly a new battle pass that you can get into. And so you'll have to do daily tasks such as kill X amount of people on this map. And you can tr- get these currency, this new currency called Stars, which they use for the last update. Um, but one of the big features is that they added a uh, new lobbies. I'm pretty sure. Private yeah, they, lobbies. Yeah. Private yeah, queuing. they added. Yeah, no, they added new private lobbies, new queues, uh, to set up these private lobbies. You can set it based on teams. You can set it, uh, based on like friends. Like if you have a certain group of friends that you play the game with, um, nice new customization. The one cool thing was that they added uh, for the FAMIS for the FAMIS gun, they had the Spectrum ZX skin for it. And it's uh, called the Spectron skin. It's so nice. So nice. I can't wait to get that one. (laughs) I took a look at this. It's going to run you. It's DLC, $14.99, new challenges, new maps, new game modes, all the fun stuff. But Mm -hmm. that that second trailer effectively has a budget, Rambo on a budget, dropping out of a jungle canopy. Murdering a jungle chicken. That's it. That's all you get. Yeah. In and that's, out. N- now I want that's some literally the intro. It does have a deathmatch mode, so it's got that going on. <laughs> I oh, mean, yes. Counter Strike without deathmatch. Well, yes, Counter Strike isn't deathmatch. It's team deathmatch. Never mind. No. Forget me. Ignore yeah. me. Well, I mean, <laughs> we we played around a minute, a couple of times with the uh, CS Go drone yourself. Yeah. Um, Battle the, Royale. The, uh, the the PUBG one. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the the name of which is escaping me at the moment. That, that. Uh, I want to say drop zone. No. Yeah, that sounds right. Dro- drop yeah. something. Yeah. Drop shot. Droppy. Yeah. Droppy. Drippity. Droppity. Droop. <laughs> We've dropping all over the place. Okay. What's up next? <laughs> oh, color breakers. Yeah. You might remember this from when we threw chairs at it a couple weeks ago. It's a game with a simple, simple requirement. Draw a picture. Draw a pretty picture. Uh, and, uh. They uh they they had a online co-op mode, but with version 2.0, they have added versus. And now this this one is um, first person to five completed drawings win. Uh, if you don't know how the game works, basically it gives you a picture. You have a bunch of like crayons uh, that you, you gotta you gotta use to match the picture, and the environment keeps fucking with you, stop you from doing that. Uh, so now, now there are teams, uh, first to five wins. They're they're not taking responsibility for any ruined friendships that are caused mm-hmm. over the course of any of these games. Um, they've also improved some online stability as well, probably to better support the versus mode. But yeah, it was it's a, it's a fun enough party game. Uh, now that it is versus mode, I think it might be worth I don't know fucking around with a little bit. Uh, I think it's two v two for the most part. See, that's what I need to find out because I. I mean, I'm seeing multiple people in here. That might be something when you're adding, you know, I'm just throwing a little suggestion in the announcement. Let people know how many people can play before. So, you know, so I can kind of math out how many copies I need to buy. Thanks for sending us Mm -hmm. keys way back when, like a couple of months ago. But yeah, versus mode would be fun. I mean, the coop mode, Jordan and I were able to non-verbally I I not figure it out. Yeah, I had no idea how to play it at all. Jordan at least had some basic clue of what he was supposed to be doing and uh yeah i mean it was fun enough but yeah versus mode might be fun if we can get i don't know eight people in yeah oh that would be jeez why yeah, that'd be, too many that'd be cooks fun. now yeah uh-uh. <laughs> too well, many cooks well spe- you gotta stack cooking, everyone on top of each other just to get them spe- into a game speaking of cooking i need some fresh ingredients sandy you got any uh mayonnaise from you uh no but if you come over to my house in the game Staxel, which uh, recently just uh, came out for uh, Linux, um, yeah, this game is literally a what I would call a Minecraft had sex with Animal Crossing and made this Mr. baby. Mr. <laughs> you're just Speaking reading. Mr. Hands. Listen, man, you, you're just reading off their store page on Steam. Come on, you got to try a lawyer than that. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. 
Like, that's this is literally what it looks like. Because you got, like, all the animal neighbors. Like, the it, it totally reminds me of Animal Crossing. There's a friendship just, update. Just more voxel. Jordan, can we build yeah. friendships? I mean, you can. Friendships are the sturdiest kinds of ships, right? Uh, I, mean, like, I only have one. I have a very serious question. Does this game have pools? I I, I don't know. It does. Have, it does have online co-op though, so you can chill out with some with some friends and farm some radishes or mayonnaise. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, mayo, yes. Yeah, like the. the I, I get I get big Stardew Valley vibes from it, and it looks like a lot of people, uh, especially responding to the Twitter announcements and then the reviews, seem to believe so as well. People like that game; it's chill. It's if you want to like mm-hmm. take a take a break from the world and farm some radishes and do a repetitive activity for a while, but it's probably good for you. Mm. Yeah. Uh, thank you for sending us some keys. We'll be taking a look at it. Maybe you'll. Uh like go over, I think it's Jordan making the background noise and like kick. Jordan uh, yeah, the, yeah, that's that's me. Okay, Bubbles. <laughs> all right. Well, coming up next, I know you we we we've been we've been teasing you all all episode. It's coming soon. We're we're gonna tell you about those Nvidia drivers. Yeah. Trust me, baby. Just just little little, little bit longer, a little Beep bit boop. longer. George R. R. Martin. Long sweet long Nvidia drivers. Yeah. yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the news segment. Yes, the segment part where we don't talk about the Steam part, right? Yeah, I except, think that except makes for sense. that one thing. Listen, I'm seeing, I yeah, am seeing except for that one thing. You know, nothing can possibly go wrong. Possibly go wrong. You know. Well, uh, <laughs> if, if if you want to help fund Sandy's trip to Itchy and Scratchy Land, so that he can take all the flash photography he could. To fucking desire, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Become a Patreon. You get to get you get some cool stuff for uh, signing up. Uh, one dollar an episode, one dollar a week gets you access to our Discord channel, which you can also get by subbing to us on Twitch. So you should definitely do that at twitch.tv slash Linux Gamecast. Surprise, surprise. Um, but you get some more cool stuff like at 250 an episode, you uh, get access to the show notes. And if you are like one Michael Fox dog, you have been all over the fucking show notes issuing oh, that's corrections. How, that, that's how Michael or, likes to roll last minute. Yeah. Like, Let's put some comments in right before the show. I'm exactly. sure they'll read them. So you, you can absolutely make adjustions, corrections, make fun of us, whatever. It's a Google Doc. It's pretty loosey goosey about that. Uh, you get, you, uh, executive producers get their name at the very top of the credits, as well as a custom RSS feed for the video version of the pre pre super chosen. That one hour extra Linux game cast goodness. It's pretty dope. Speaking of the pre pre super chosen, I mean, if you like this, this is the gooey middle, which is good. It's good. It's the choice cut. It's but cream filling. If you want that full four and a half to five hour rock block, I mean, that starts an hour earlier. We got you covered. Kicks a little Yo. bit of cheddar, custom RSS feed. You get the MP3s. You get the videos. If basically what I'm saying is if you need like four and a half, five hours or something, background noise, Linux related, <laughs> gaming related, sci fi and the barbarian related. Right. We, we go places <laughs> throughout this. Uh, we got you covered each and every week. Yeah, the, the, this week is definitely Conan the Barbarian cast. Right. Um, we 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 also uh, we got to thank uh, one of actually no we don't we got to thank him later. We got a store store dot linuxgamecast.com. Buy your LGC apparel. Buy your LGC merch. Cover yourself in it. One of one of our Discord members, Linux Nuru, went to the grocery store wearing my face on his cleavage. And have you gotten over I'm, that yet? Or do you do you? No. Yeah. yeah I, when you see the picture, like ah okay. It's it's never not weird, and I think so, I think something will have gone wrong once it stops being weird. This, this so is fair. Uh, we we highly encourage you to weird us out by posting our um, face off yeah. shirt, which yeah, is or, or or just putting putting the stickers in random places. Yeah, just mm-hmm. wow. the it's, weird. it's great. Hello, it's nice. it covers yes. up naughty words with more naughty words. It's awesome. That's so I mean, it. We also have a wish list. If you go to linuxgamecast.com, put your mouse over the support button and scroll down. Uh, Vent has a studio wish list. I got a wish list. Pedro has a wish list. Jill has a wish list. Sandy doesn't, but you know what? You can give stuff to me and I will throw the scraps over the fence to Sandy and he can <laughs> frolic and bathe in leftover webcams. Uh, but if you send us some stuff on the wish list, if you send Ven some stuff, you get your name on the fuck. Wall over there. I you can have also to add a new person to the wall. Oh, oh my god! <gasps> and you can also what? give us a little note that we got to read. Ven has one from uh, Mister Gamotron. Yes, ma'am. A gift for you. 
which um, see, you really should take advantage of this to get us to read like offside stuff that <laughs> yeah, put in like a dumb, game or dumb something, dumb right? Fucking, right, yeah. and stitch it together later yeah. on. Highly incriminating. Game of Tron writes, I'm not sure I want to know, uh, hang on, I want to know what you want this for, but for the love of Linus Torvalds, don't let the neural interface take control of Frank from Game of Tron. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, that's, that's, oh, that's oh. loud. That's huge. Lucky. Look, oh, damn. a pancake maker. <laughs> Okay. I can, I can make pancakes now. It's awesome. So what what do you Fantastic. what do you need to like precision solder or like are you do, are you making jewelry? Oh or? my god, look at that. Wow. Or are 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 you are you just being the that one dude from Top Secret who has who's looking in the magnifying glass and has the giant eye? Like the yeah. legitimate use case for this is uh, I use this, thank you, Game Matron, uh, in all seriousness. To uh when I was wiring just like the AES Ethernet cable to hold the jacks. Mm. I can hold that there, then you know, because or I can hold boards at mm. angles oh, and stuff really like that. Cool, right? I mean, it's not as fun. See, I don't have kids, so I can be like, "Come here, Timmy. Daddy wants to burn your fingers accidentally." <laughs> um, yeah. Or I, th- I thought you were gonna like trap Timmy in this thing for eternity. Just clip <laughs> one one limb to each of the little things and have at the magnifying point glass. Did I laser. say it couldn't do that? I, I don't that- know. We're, we're, we're workshopping things here, man. Right. That's oh, exactly. how it works. So, it's, yeah, it's, it's uh, flow state. Seriously, thanks for that. Uh, I'll, I have a metal version of this out in the shop in the garage, but I want stuff like this upstairs, like that soldering iron from Linux Neuro, just so I can have something I can bring into the studio and fix something as opposed to removing the thing, dragging it downstairs and going outside and t- t- doing that. And so, yeah, that was very handy. And I, I'm getting at the age where I'm like, I can't read what that says. Damn it. <laughs> and, and, and you got a bit of the shakies too, yeah. which makes that a little more tricky. Surprisingly, yeah. no shakies. No, no shakies? No. That is so hands. awesome. No. Like, because like just looking at the magnifying glass there, and I assume that's an LED light on oh, the yeah, other baby. side. Oh, yeah, baby. Yeah, it is. Oh, like that is beautiful. Like, I, I can imagine that. I had that XLR barrel cable, and I was like, okay, what's pin one on this? Ah, because I couldn't see it regularly. I'm like, there it is. Yeah. And clip, 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 done, done, done. And uh, yeah. That, that's very handy. Thank you very much for that. And I will have you up and loaded. I think you're going to be the last. No, we can get. Do you think we get one more name after this? I mean, I mean depends on how tiny you write. Yeah. Uh, that, well, yeah, we're going to see. I'm not going to. We'll, we'll see how Game of Tron fits on this. Yeah. And you, if, you might you might be able to squeeze like another column in there, maybe. I don't know. Well, I have an entire right maybe. side of that. Yeah, so yeah, ex- ex- yeah, exactly. Yeah. But that's like the prime real estate right there. So the, yeah, the, the, exactly. The good, that good. left side. Anybody wants that bottom right hand? You're going to pay for it son because there's nothing <laughs> cheap on that also you sniped me on this game of drawn because i drug this all the way down to the bottom of the wish list i use the wish list as it's if you're wondering about shit i'm going to be buying that's what i use it for and i went to go pick it up and amazon's like you can't buy this which i know what that means by now <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yeah. so thank you so thank you so talk to me about let's, video drivers, uh, Andy. yeah exactly let's drive it on home because guess what the latest freaking NVIDIA driver is finally out. Exciting. And they came they came in with some pretty good fixes. They came in with some very nice fixes. Um, one of the key points that I was very happy about, because I've been very interested in this racing game, they fixed Vulcan performance regression that affected R-Factor 2, which is a, a pretty much a racing simulator game, kind of like Project Cars. Um which was awesome. But they did a, a lot of uh, GPU applications got optimized, GPU-based applications. Um, the DRM KMS enabled for mode set one on, what was it, 514 for the Linux kernel? Double-checking that. Yes, it is the 514 kernel. Um, and other stuff. So suspended power management was another big one. Um, not that big for me, but now one of the big things know. that I saw that kind of caught my attention was uh direct D3D12. And there's a memory leak, known memory mm-hmm. leak that unfortunately I've not run across. I'm like, hey, maybe it fixes that. And Foxy chimed in. Apparently, there was an issue with RAM munching in Cyberpunk out of all the other problems. This is the one that would take your game down on Linux. It's been sorted, so that's good to see. Jordan, you've uh compiled it and installed it along 
As I have, I, I haven't, I, uh, here's my full analysis of it. It works. Anal cyst. Yeah. I was going for an anal cyst, but yeah. Analysis <laughs> came out. Are you judging me silently? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. As is tradition. As is tradition. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it installs, right? Like it builds on five fourteen. Um, the one, the one thing, if you're on a laptop, cause I, I, I do know that Nvidia graphics on mobile is a bit of a pain point. I've experienced it. If you have a uh, Optimus laptop, you have experienced it too, but Uh, There's some power management fixes for mobile as well for uh, better suspend resume support. Specifically, when you resume your computer, it won't kill all your graphical applications, which is pretty fucking nice. Mm. Um, Also disabling FXAA on Firefox for uh, better uh, for reduced visual artifacts. I mean, whatever. It's it's a thing. Do you think they could add a fix that'll stop like the Bing experimentation on end users? No, that that requires more like sledgehammer to side ahead uh. type of fix, less so <laughs> in code. This new version of Dix fix out. Uh, surprise, surprise. <gasps> yeah, it's you know we we we, we heard that you know it, it stabilized. They're slowing down development, but I guess now that the uh, Steam Deck is coming out, we're starting to see more Get and more game gear, specific. Kids. Yeah, I mean, all this is basically all like game specific fixes. There's some better CPU utilization for uh, D3D9. Uh, they fixed some tests for uh, D3D9 as well for Wine. And yeah, um, Call of Cthulhu has fixes. Crisis 3 and Homefront Revolution have fixes. Uh, Fantasy Grounds, the virtual tabletop, has some incorrect rendering that was fixed. Apparently, uh, they did fix a hang in Pathfinder Were the Righteous, but the game itself is busted in a way that Dix Vix will not fix. So oh, no. you're, you're a little, you're a little screwed with that one. Yeah. Um, that, I, I was actually a little sad about that. Cause I was looking at picking up a war of the righteous. Cause I really enjoyed the Kingmaker, uh, the previous Pathfinder game. Hmm. So yes. Yeah. Kingmaker is a great freaking game. Uh, they, they had some, uh, a number of graphical issues at the beginning there, but they sorted that out. Um, I've already heard a bunch of complaints from a number of my buddies about wrath of the righteous. Like, uh, crap ton of graphical issues so yeah, yeah apparently no game's just busted. It, like you said <laughs> i don't think dick fix is gonna fix it <laughs> well i mean it's good to see that they're still dialing back with the performance because i mean there's still performance gains to be made you know we don't oh, yeah, sure. necessarily see it all the time because usually when we're dealing with like uh direct 3d like direct x9 man usually we're just crushing that so mm-hmm. yeah also, also when you, you got to consider that a lot of this work is for the Steam Deck, right? And mo- yeah, you for the mobile CPU to keep it under a power envelope, you got to optimize the fuck out of this shit. Otherwise, mm-hmm. you're not going to get any sort of realistic battery life for playing a game. This is real. You, you can get you can get through the intro cinematics, the unskippable ones, and then your, your <laughs> Steam Deck dies. Well, Jordan, I know one of your biggest complaints about wine in general is that your head joysticks were not enabled by default. Drove you to I wall, know. Ah, well, you know what? My, our long national nightmare is yeah. over. Uh, Wine 6.18 is out. It is a pretty small release. Um, like most of the minor releases, it is there just for bug fixes. Uh, we talked a bit about the HID joystick uh, being um, br- uh, br- being improved. Broughton. Broughton improvements, too. Um <laughs> It's Broughton, Broughton County. I don't know. Broughton. Uh, but but uh, it's on, it's in prime time now. Uh, you will get a uh, jo- joystick enabled by default uh, if you're using the latest version of Wine. Not too many game specific fixes. Uh, there's one for RE7, I believe. Okay. And that's kind that's kind of it. Um, I mean, bo- boring releases are good releases, right? It means that shit's going forward as expected, and no major aggressions are being introduced. So I don't know. I'm always kind of, I, I like when they're nice and chunky because there's always that weird ass program that you haven't heard of in 20 years that somebody legitimately tied to it. English, Melodyne 5, something click just and type. crazy. You're like, what's going on? And somebody reported that and they're like, oh, well, I guess we need to take care of that. So keep on keeping on. I- I wonder yeah. is do they do they have a sig or a team or just the, like a dude on the wine team whose job is just to like find weird old obscure Windows apps and just <laughs> see if you can get them running um, just pro- for, just for completeness. It's a rotating it's a rotating uh, position through the wine team. It's the last person that did a force push. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Or whoever, whoever gets the short straw get, gets to browse two cows and download.org and just trying to run shit in wine. So I was gonna cool. say they probably do like a rock paper scissors. Yeah. It's like elimination style, so it's like they get the whole team together. Rock, paper, scissors. Nope. Rolling the, roll the dice. 
Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so we rarely catch these the day of we because they usually we they usually get updated like just as we go live. But we got you, Eggy. You you wily bastard. I got you. Uh, there's brand new uh, Proton GE custom out. It is GE six eighteen dot one. And if you that number sounds a little familiar, that is because he old Eggy has applied the Proton patch set to uh, Wine six dot eighteen. There's a couple things here. Um, there's a couple fixes for Sonic Colors, for Bejewels. Uh, apparently, Chloe Stars is one of the big contributors, along with Paul Goffman, for this release. And speaking of HID uh, joystick input, apparently this is causing some problems for Guilty Gear players. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not fully tested. Um, there's there's still some stuff going on. I'm expecting another release Guilty in the next Gear. week. That sounds familiar. That's a it's an anime fighter, kind of like... Uh, yes, very much. Uh, it, it, it plays very similar to Blaze Blue. It's that I'm, style of game. I, uh, what's his uh, guy watch or, uh, streaming? Yeah, he, he played that and it had like yeah. the uh, squeaky anime shit. Like every time yeah, they move, yeah, I had to cut it off. <laughs> <Just> like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, pe- 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 people like their anime fight- fighters. It's basically like versus spectacle brawlers. But a lot mm-hmm. of people use fight sticks for them. Um, apparently, the wine change here. Um, that I don't know. Your your mileage may vary. Uh, test it out. Give Eggy some feedback because all this stuff gets upstream to regular wine, anyways, mm-hmm. and to Proton proper because Eggy is on that team. Good to know. So I made a thing. I did a thing because uh, hey, you know what? People tend to play video games on Linux, and sometimes they want to capture no. those video games on Linux. What? Yeah, I know. What? I know. And that can be very pricey as, you know, uh, previous videos of like, here's my $900 capture card uh, or like the black magic $500 kind of like the little thing we've all been looking for is something, you know, sub $100 or hang on, or you can get one that has a blue USB port. That's USB too. Ah, danger. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Doesn't have the correct pins. And, but, We've all been looking for something that's sub $100 that can do 1080p 60 capture on Linux. No big hassle to set up. You can use it with your laptop. You don't have to have PCIe holes or anything like that. The closest you could get to that reliably up to this point would have been like an Elgato uh, Cam Link. And those are about 120 130 bucks. Well, you might know Pedro has this flashy one from EVGA called the XR1 and it's got this like annoying blinky stuff on the top of it. This garish red knob and like audio holes in the side. And it's like 120. It is right up there with the Elgato cam link. Well, EVGA is like, you know what, man, we can go cheaper. We can hook people up. And this is what they did. They've released the XR one light, which does what everyone's looking for. 1080 P 60 under a hundred bucks. And it's USB three for reels. And it can do, yeah, I'm going to go 480p all the way up to 1080p 60. I tested it. I peeled it apart. I plugged it into penguins. And it came Ah, back. you ripped it. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. I know. The value was gone completely. No, no. You, you, you got to peel it cleanly off, man. That's what no, the people want to see. No, I had to, to my psychic razor blade. That's how I determine uh, material. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, at the end of the day, you get a USB 3 capture card. does 1080p 60. And I've been hiding this part. 4K. Uh, UHD, consumer UHD, 2160p, 4K for people bad at maths, pass through. And this is all for under, not $100, under $70. And that puts it like $40 less than Elgato Cam Link 4K. Ooh, OBS sticker. Uh, I, I stopped the video there. I'm like, ooh, look. Uh, this is OBS certified device. Now, compared to like the Cam Link, now um, the Cam Link, you will be trading the ability to capture 4K 30 because it, you're just going to do 4K 60 on the USB or the Elgato Cam Link, but you're going to get the ability to do that 4K pass through because I you know a lot of you out there are still on single monitors or maybe you're on a laptop. You need to be able to play the game full screen, but you also need to record the footage. This works. I've tested all that. Now, to save some cost, save some cost, they've just deleted the uh, 3.5 millimeter audio holes. They've gotten rid of the red knob and it doesn't, it doesn't blink. It doesn't blink, but God. it's got it where it counts. It even includes a free block of metal on the inside that does nothing except add weight to it. Perceived value <laughs> weight. It's a very important, very important part of a, uh, I thought it was a heat sink at first. And I'm like, hmm, wait, we're looking at the video version right now. Go check it out <laughs> at LinuxGameCast.com. And, you know, you do the hand test of, let's take a look at, yeah, that's, that's just there to make it feel like it costs a bit more because it's just plastic. 
And uh, hey, it's the illusion of premium. I used it with uh, the DSLR. I went through all of them. We can go to some uh, capture test. I stacked it up in the video. Go check it out uh, against NDI, which is completely free. A Blackmagic Backlink Mini 4K and the EVGA XR1 Lite. I did a regular test, you know, capturing a DNX HD 440 high quality old man VIN video. But then something I don't see anybody do. I wanted to throw this. Let's see what it's actually going to look like when you stream to Twitch. And let's compare those three. You know, let's give it a 6,500 bit rate, set it, use NV encode. And then you start going, hmm, well, there's not really that much difference between a $200 card and a uh, sub $70 card because there's not. No. In that particular situation. But yeah, timestamps, videos, driver installation. There it is. That's the entire segment on that. Plug it in. You're good. It's a uh, V4 L2. V4 L2 device. Yep. Yeah. Shows right up OBS and all the other fun stuff. It's got camera controls and uh, the pass through works. There's a shot of the board. Here's our new review thing. And uh, yeah, tables. I give it a solid 10 out of 10. And the only like little ah, is the HDMI audio only. But again, for the price, I don't really think you can complain too much. And no. I, I was very happy, very pleased with it. And thank you, EVGA for seeing that I posted about it and retweeting it to your 600,000 followers. That was a very welcome. Freaking right. Wow. Good job. Evangel. Looks looks like a nice little, uh, nice little card for the price. Yeah, Definitely. it is. And, it it. and listen, it comes with a free block of metal. You're not going to get that with the Elgato cam link. <laughs> no. What, 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 did, what did you do with very yours? True. I, I put it back in for safekeeping. I didn't want to damage my free metal. Ah, yeah. all right. You know, it's, it's it's the most precious of Keep resources. Keep it nice and shiny. Mm. Yes. Mm. <laughs> all right. I, I I got a terrible joke for you. What happens when the Prime Minister of Canada uh, gets out of post secondary school? You get a Trudeau grad. This uh, coming up next. We're throwing chairs at that. Enjoy. <laughs> I I got to power my way through this to get to the sweatshirt, man. Give me a second. Oh, I hope you're still cringing from my awful, awful, awful joke. If you're, unless you're watching the standalone version of this, then I don't know. Go watch LGC Weekly. Uh, this week we're taking a look at Adam RPG Trudeau Grad, developed by Adam Team on the Unity Engine. You can pick it up for it's about eleven ninety nine Canadian. What's the price in U.S. Freedom Dollars? Ten ninety nine U.S. What is it? Adam RPG Trudeau Grad is a turn based post apocalyptic role playing game which continues the story of Adam RPG as a standalone sequel expansion and follows the tradition set by classic CRPGs such as the early Fallout and Wasteland titles. We got to thank Adam Team for sending us some keys. Uh, yeah, Atom. I guess let's let, get yeah, Atom up and at them. So, Ven's going to give you a very quick rundown on Debian, and then Sandy and I will get to the proper review. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this thing is using Vulcan. That's right. This bad boy can almost hit 20, not 2060, at 2160p on my little 2060. 1080p held at a solid 60 with everything on 11. Impressive when you consider this is a Unity title. Windowed full screen. Make with the working. Happy to see that. Not, and I repeat, not compatible with Nintendo PowerPad. But, you point, you click, you was you the Q and E for the spins. Then you scroll around a bit. All of that works. Your keyboard, your gerbils. Happy to see that on a technical level. Gets a clean bill of health on Debian 11. So most of your Debian likes should work without any issues on NVIDIA at least. And of course, this was being run on our Threadbooper 1920X with all 32 gigajoules of memory RAM. Good work, team. Good work, team. Now, uh, if I had to pick at like one thing. One little flaw, it would be the encoding in the video, especially that intro video. That looks a bit rough uh, on a 43-inch monitor, but that could just be me. Let's talk about fun, though. Y'all got any more of that direction? Because I spent a long time just running around like, what the fuck am I supposed to be doing? I'm going to talk to this person. This, I'm going to talk to this person. Like 45 minutes aimlessly wandering around. I'm not a fan of hand-holding, but damn, by pure RNG, I found my pa. And the game began. But um, that said, I'm kind of only here just to let everyone know that, hey, this thing works great on Debian. And just to give a big thumbs up to Team Atom uh, for their work on that. Uh, because I'm just not a fan of point-and-click adventure games, you know. And Trogador, 
didn't really do anything to change that. I always got to try this. You know, I put like 45, 50 minutes into this, seeing if there's, is this going to be the game that like changes my mind about this genre, which is not necessarily bad. I just don't, I see other people that really enjoy this. I'm like, man, I wish I had that experience. However, these next two lads, they are seriously into this type of nonsense. So I want you to hear them out, but let me give you a solid two, solid, solid technical two for the work that you've done here. Yeah. So on Fedora 34, 64 bit with the R9 3900X and the GTX 1080 Ti, it launches out of the box and it can hold uh, 68 UHD using the uh, Vulcan render. I don't know. I don't like the UI so much. It, all your actions are hidden in a context menu. You can only see when you long press on stuff. And like, that's not immediately apparent. I had to, I had to look that up. I was stuck in the first room for a while and I'm like, uh, oh, okay. Because normally you have a little panel of actions you can do. Um, very reminiscent of like uh, Sierra style point and click adventure games um there is uh the, the visuals are all right they're about on par with say your pillars of like pillars of eternity one i'm going to come back to that comparison in a little bit um but it, it looks it looks good enough for a isometric point and click rpg you can rotate the camera which is nice um there's voice acting sometimes not all the time but sometimes your main uh, your, your main narrator though he definitely sounds like i'm listening to some snake jazz though um, otherwise like, yeah, some stuff is voice acted, mostly like the aside, choose your own adventure stuff. Everything else is not, you got to read it yourself. So yeah. So fun wise, the build I went to was for maximum speech, luck and intelligence. And it hadn't been about 30 minutes into the game when I convinced a drunken NPC to sleep with me for a hundred rubles. So, I mean, you have, it, the game has that going for it. I didn't have a hundred rubles, but I know those feels. No, I, I they paid me a hundred rubles. They, uh, I, I hooked myself. Um, honestly, I've been, I've been spoiled by Baldur's Gate 3. That game is just like, despite how crashy it is, it is so thorough. Um, the sheer amount of fuckery possible with this game makes going back to more traditional CRPGs like this really, really hard. I do appreciate it has a large, broad variety of dialogue options, uh, that bring in all the skills. Uh, it hits the same sort of wall that uh, Fallout or Planescape Torment or Pillars of Eternity does when it comes to uh, in Fallout Infinity Engine style games, but it does a good job of making sure that whatever builds you have are viable. And like Fallout, they give you plenty of ways to build things. Like I pit, I went for a non-combat build. I think Sandy went for a full combat build and it works. You can, I managed to sidestep a shit ton of combats just because I maxed out speech and just convinced people to let me through. Um it has some city exploration stuff similar to P Pillars of Eternity, Deadfire. Uh, the combat. I did get into one fight, and it's not great. It's bog standard for the genre. It's competent enough gun chess, but again, compared to BG3 or even Pillars of Eternity, it's not fantastic. Um, speaking of gameplay, and to Ben's point about lack of direction, you will spend large swaths of this game on the map screen because it is the only damn way you can find your way around from point A to point B. Uh, yeah, it's not, it's not great. You're going, you're, you really just go to the overworld when you need to talk to people and click on a couple things. Um, point of order last week, I said that there is no way to import old characters. That is not true. I double checked. You can, but only if you finish an Adam RPG. Oh, no. Yeah. And, um, only if you didn't use any mods. I didn't really play the first one, so I don't think my investment in the world is where it needed to be for like me to get super invested in the game. All in all, it's okay. There's nothing really wrong with it, but it's kind of bog standard. Nothing really hooks it for me. I'm going to give it one chair or two chairs. Two okay. chairs. Sorry. All right. You, you beat the smoke, so I didn't catch you off. Yeah. All right, let's go over to Sandy. Yeah. So as for me, I'm running on the Pop OS 2104. I got the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 Super running the Intel i7-9700F at 4.7 gigahertz with the 16 gigabytes of RAM. And it ran for the... So at the beginning, it ran. It did the opening video. And then it did a lock on the right after the video. And I was like, what the hell? And it did it. So I closed the program and opened it up again under Vulkan. Same thing happened. So then I checked the 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 bug, and uh, apparently it was saying that uh, it didn't install properly. So I re-verified the game files, and it put in the proper uh, Vulkan files this time, and it ended up going up as working as it's supposed to. So goddamn Unity games, as per 
Uh, launching the game alone outside of Steam runs great. Like, 60 frames a second, same as the Steam version. Um, I found the load times a little bit quicker. Um, but outside of that, like, there's no major difference. Like, the frame rates are still the same. They're still solid, especially on Vulcan. Uh, story-wise, uh, if you don't have the save file, you're essentially filling out the questionnaire. Um and essentially just filling in what you left off from the the last game, how you did it from the last game. Um, the UI, I think, it looks nicer in this version. Uh, personally, just from my perspective, like I like how they went with the, the very retro terminal look. Um, overall, like the, the voice acting, like, well, the music is good. The sound effects are really good. Definitely uh, adds to the environment. Um, the voice acting, when there is voice acting, it kind of ranges and it's kind of weird because I don't know if anyone noticed, but some people had like a Southern accent and I was like, what? I was like, really? In Russia? I was like, okay, whatever. I'll go Russia's with it. Russia's got a South. Yeah, it's it's got Southern Russia. Oh, I see you're from Southern Russia. You got that Southern accent. <laughs> well, well, it looks like the doctor. Lots of places have a North. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, is it fun? Yeah, it's fun. Like I ended up like uh Jordan mentioned, I went full combat with my character. I didn't boost up the endurance as much as I should, but I I went all in with weapons and stuff like that. I uh essentially remade my character from Shadowrun, Blit Carton. Yes. Ugh. He's making a comeback. Yes. <laughs> And uh, yeah, like the combat, like Jordan said, there's nothing really new here, but it's enjoyable because I do, it sticks to what has been tried and true for the genre. And I really like it. I like it for what it is. I like the fact that I can rotate the camera in this, like, whereas like pillars, the first pillars of eternity, you know, because it was pre-rendered scenes. Um. I, I definitely enjoy having to rotate the camera. And yeah, obviously, is it is it triple A quality material stuff? No. But is it more open in terms of what you can do? Hells yes. Like you can do quite a bit in here, especially like in terms of like choices and You're out of time, a lot baby. of other stuff. Oh yeah. Well, so well, like if you I'm, if you give I'm, it a chair rating, gonna, three chairs. Oh yeah. Dumb yeah, I'm dumb. giving it the three chairs, man. I, I I don't know. Final thoughts? Uh, I think it needs more Sparta kicks. That, that's that's my take. <laughs> Here's the thing. I would put this on. Uh, a lot of this boils down to simply like when I like personally want to play games, and I, I'm not the target for this. I'm not. Yeah. I know that. That's why I went immediately out and I said, "Hey, is not my. I don't like to sit and read when I'm playing a game. Mm-hmm. Constantly, constantly, constantly. I, I like action games. I'm I'm dumb. I'm like Vin Smash, but. Also, I grew up playing these point-and-click adventure games. So, like, I, I I was worn out on that shit back in the Double Fine, like, round one days. So, I mean, this is incredibly well done. I, w- I wouldn't mind, like, a first-person view of this, though. Like, if I could run around, like, if it was uh, <laughs> GTA Moscow. Fall out. Yeah. Yeah. Something like yeah. that. But, yeah, I mean, good job, team. Good job. I mean, it, yeah. it's competent, very competent, and it, I have any issues with it performance-wise and just on the technical aspect. It, this is good to see, especially with the experimental vocal render. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's always nice yes. to see that people are using that option in Unity. Hopefully, eventually, uh, the OpenGL render will get sunset, and then we're just going to be all Vulcan all the time, and nothing will work. Indeed. Uh, all right, mm-hmm. so coming up next... We got some hate mail. We're going we're gonna to get more feedback about those NVIDIA drivers, man. Yeah. People really want to talk about them. Hey, welcome back. So if you guys got some uh, mail that you guys want to send us, you know, some comments saying, Sandy, your face is ugly, or Jordan, you're too hot for your own good, uh, you just head over to linuxgamecast.com, click on the contacts, you scroll on down, you select the type of show, uh, which would be LGC Weekly. You put in uh, the header, um, say what no, it, not, your message not is all about. Yeah, not DVD. <laughs> uh, if you're the a band? developer, make sure you toss in some Steam keys, preferably also, three yes. Steam keys. Yes. And then, uh, you know, 
if you don't give us three Steam keys, then uh, we're just not going to review it. That's just plain and simple. No, you know? that's not that's... how a panel review... <laughs> That's always kind of the brilliant <laughs> thing about it. We'd love to hear from you, though. I mean, you can always drop us a comment. Absolutely. On Patreon, on YouTube, but that is the way to get a hold direct line because I always wanted to make it easy to get. Don't you hate it when, like, hey, man, I want to provide a piece of information or maybe you've been looking for something. You go to, like, can I just, like, contact this person? Nope. We don't have a gatekeeping, man. Just just give it we to us We do have raw. a spam golem, though. You know what? I almost included a bit of spam at like a spammer, a real human being followed oh. all the spam rules <laughs> oh. <laughs> about like, tell me more. I, I will forge you the email. Oh man. It, it uh, made it through. I was more impressed. I'm like, well, well done. Well done. Well done. <laughs> um, it's kind of a rarity, but starting, you might notice uh, something I've been playing through is I, I love an open world fuck around simulator. And I, I don't have, like the time I used to have, oh, geez, man, I remember when I was a child to play them. But games like Horizon Ginger Turbo, um, Tomb Raiders, Mad Maxes, the Skyrims, something you can drop in, play an hour, play two hours, and uh, eventually beat. I've been doing that with Days Gone, which is a uh, motorcycle, vroom, vroom, zombie, murder, get back on the bike, drive some more, run out of petrol because your tank's that big. I mean, the most unrealistic thing about the Days Gone game is the petrol consumption of the fucking engine in that bike. That is just mind-boggling. But I've been streaming that on Twitch on Fridays, and uh, Nathan Nathan decided that it, maybe I was playing it wrong. I don't know, playing it too good. But, yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously, this says, love this game, played it to 100% completion on the PS4 Pro quite, we, quite, bleh, quite recently. You definitely want to look at the condition of the weapons. Mill spec for the Drifter Crossbow is way better than the Junk spec one. The best weapons in the game are the Mill spec or the Special Forces one. Also, quick tip about melee weapons. Upgrading one resets its durability, so if you have the parts to upgrade one, get a few good swings in before you upgrade it to avoid wasting scrap. Second tip, you can use your flashlight to attract freakers or other humans if you're hiding in a murder bush switch them then switch it on then off as soon as they take notice and start to approach it's a really good way to draw them close along with throwing rocks all right so you got some you got some pro tips clearly watched mm -hmm. uh because mm -hmm. you know in all of these games it doesn't matter um murder bushes is like murder yeah murder bush <laughs> always murder bush <laughs> hey look yeah, there's a bush yeah. can i duck at it am i invisible all right people about to die yeah, just <laughs> wait, wait yeah. for people to walk on by, stab them in the brain. <laughs> and you know, you, exactly. You have like 14 NPCs spread around you. And you're like, stealth. It's great. Um, Mur murder, murder bush, man. It fucking works. <laughs> they get shit done. Yep. I mean, every time. Thanks for the tips. I, I, I'm just like cutting through it. I'm, I'm trying to vend my way through the game. I'm avoiding all side quests. And I, I think this is just a huge game. Um, because I'm not very far into it. Uh, but I did get it. Uh, we got a little bit of like a hate thing on uh, the video I posted on YouTube. Somebody's like, this game sucks. I played all the way through it. It's horrible. It's been an experience. I'm like, can you just imagine like hate watching hate? That game must have damaged that poor kid because like that's, <laughs> that's what he does now. I mean, it must have like scarred him. Like, the motorcycle ran over his dog or something. Or Jesus something, Christ. Man. And I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, it runs great under Linux. So I'll probably keep trugging along with it. But up next NVIDIA drivers. We, yes. People keep asking about those NVIDIA drivers, man. This is from shiny video stuff. And they say developers have to enable Proton support or actively, actively enable Proton yeah. support. Guess what the next problem will be, Ellipse? Why not simply enable this for all EAC developers by default? It's only optional because Epic chooses to let developers ignore the Steam Deck and Linux users. You know, you know what? I don't think that's 100% true. I, I think this is damage control because the second you say, well, now we're going to let uh, we're going to let all these Linux users in, you're going to start get, getting FUD induced uh, wrong, but still they still believe this developer pushback saying like, Oh, but this is where all the cheaters are. I can actively modify the platform underneath. The, 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 why, why are you ma making me address all these hackers? I want, I would just, I want to support windows but, only, but, but bro, bro, all, all the tools to do all that are windows only. 
Shut up! I don't oh, care. I'm Linux sorry. users are hackers. <laughs> like, yeah. The, the, no, if 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 it was an opt in, you would one hundred percent get a litany of that. It is, and mm-hmm. it's also the damage control because you're going to get very real, uh, brand new support emails from people who have never played your game before, and it doesn't quite work on their Linux box. Yeah. So making it opt in is uh, a everything should always be opt in. Um, Yep. By default, including this, because you want to at least have like, yo, any of you, this is, this is me at the developer. Uh, we're sitting at the game studio. It's like, any of you motherfuckers got a Linux box? You? All right. Guess what? You got a new job. Um, okay. Click done. Let's, let's uh, yeah. see how that plays out now. Ooh. Ooh. So you can click it, which also means, which I'm assuming you can de click it. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Think about that, Joe. Mm-hmm. You're like, you know what? This is, this is bullshit. This is too much of a headache. I don't like dealing with these. I, off. I, I I wonder what the over under is on who's gonna who's gonna be the first to do that. Mm. Mm. My money's still on Bungie. Bungie. Bungie or Blizzard. Yeah. I don't know. I could I could definitely see Blizzard for sure. Because they're dicks. <laughs> does, what did Blizzard have any games on Steam? No, no, but um, no. I don't. I don't know. The easy anti cheat stuff still also applies to wine. So even stuff outside of Linux or outside of uh, Steam Play will still benefit from the support. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. I don't know. It, it's we do currently live in interesting times right now. Is all I can say. I remember, Damn it! Just go out there and buy a Steam Deck. Play some video games is the best thing you do. Let's put some numbers on the fuck mothering board, kids. And uh, that's going to do more than annoying anyone, guaranteed. But on that upbeat bombshell, we're going to bring in some music. Cue it, one might even say. And we say special thank you, Sandro, for once again filling our hole that we had. Look at that, froze just right. I told you it wouldn't. <laughs> if you want to get a hold of me, uh, I'm easy to get a hold of. I'm on Twitter, man, uh, just at Vin Stone. I'm there. I post stuff regularly and uh, at reply me there. Or if you're a patron or if you're on high RC, we, we got free IRC. Sneak into our discord. High RC. Uh, just at reply Vin and I'll, I'll see the notification. We could have a discussion right there. Or if you're on Mastodon, mast.linuxgamecast.com. I'm just at Vin on our little federated thing. And uh, I'll be happy to uh, read what you have to say. I'm Jordan Swung. According to point zero 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 one percent of Canadians, I am too sexy for my own good. So if you want to see some thirst traps, head on over to at the Burning Fool on Twitter or twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. You might get a nip slip. Told you. And uh, I'm Sandy Martin. Aye, aye. And uh, you can find me on Twitter at Altamagus. Uh, you can also find me on Mastodon at Altamore at Linux.social. Same Not Linux.pasta. Beautiful people. Let's roll those yeah. credits. Yeah. Yeah. Hell Cyclopedia. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Well, it's that time again. You paid to get your name read aloud on the internet. So lo and behold, You're we're doing it. So we got to pick up. Gotta thank our advisors. Oh my god, Omega, Arthur, and you're so hot. Aldius, Bob Ram, Scott Michaud, Mr. Fox Dog, Atomic Aspect, G, MT, Drummer 7, Holy Toast, Kohaku. Too sexy for their own good. Chicago, Chicago kicks, kicks ass. ass with our little Nicky fans. See yeah, monsters, Nixon's Jack Pyramid, B, baby. Riders X Machina, Truggy, Fair to Duda, Justin, Frosty Claus, and of course, Nobin. Sandy can't read. Nova Damn it, K, I keep Basil B, Charlie P. Oh god, I can't read it. Uh, Jason B, Lord Maka, Joel W, <laughs> Iris, 121, AJ Dusky, Brock, Kai Linux, T, Mar- uh, Thomas T, Martin W, Rohit, <laughs> Mayor, Fraso, nine. Jonas, Chris J, another Kai Linux cast, Incredible Lyric, Evandro P, Zeno, Daniel Belric, Monica, Oil of Hope, Max Nine, Carl, Jim. Mike, are there in Linux Neuro, Aldeus, Noctilus, John, Eshep, and the new contender of the throne, Game Mo. Tron. Hashtag Mr. Hands. Get that trending. Pancake Retweet maker. the show when it's posted. <laughs> Hashtag Mr. Hands. <laughs> Mr. Hands. Hi, Two dudes, whatever one government horse. agency that's going to be contacting me next week. Looking forward to it. <laughs> bye bye. Five, bye. five dudes.